circumstance that makes someone cry out to God, he loves it, he's okay with that. The value is on the relationship with God, not the circumstance. The next verse, blessed are the meek. You need to ask yourself these questions. 
This isn't something you answer right now. This is not something you answer right now. This is something you pray about with the Lord. We're going to probably have a time to respond to God at the end of this week. Over the next few days, I want to invite you to pray. God, help me. Where do I need to change? What do I value that's not a kingdom value? What don't I trust about you? All of this is asking you to trust God very deeply. So spend time with the Holy Spirit over the next few days, inviting Him to show you what's in your heart. He loves you and He wants to uh, minister to you. What time should we break the right? Uh, I'm not sure. You can break it well. Okay, go all the way to 12. You can, or you can break now. No, 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 I can go all the way. Is that okay with you guys? Keep going for about 15 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, are there any specific questions about the rest of the verses in, in this section of blessing? I want you to understand the bigger picture and how they all relate together. The bigger picture and how everything relates together. Any specific questions? I will say one thing. Uh, well, two things. In verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart. What makes your heart pure? Faith. Faith in God. That's all you have to do to make your heart pure. You put your faith in God. He puts his righteousness in you. That'll make your heart pure. Uh, and then my other point in verse 9. Uh, the word is peace maker. Not peace hoper. I don't know what, what is the word in your translation, peacemaker. Uh, and it say in English, translated from my is that for people who give um, peace, he, he will make a society. People who build peace? Not build, uh, is that what you said? No, that's not okay. Create peace. Or create peace. Yeah. Yeah. Peace creator, right? Not peace watcher. Not someone who hopes that there will be peace someday. 
Not someone who preaches about peace. Someone who makes peace. It's just a little pet, <coughs> pet thing in my heart. Okay. The, the kingdom of God changes your understanding of what's valuable and what is a blessing. You need to change your mind on what, what your values are sometimes. Okay, let's look at verse 13 through, um, uh, well, yeah, let's look at verse 13. Actually, actually, go through verse 15. Go ahead and read that. Talking about things that don't make sense. So, uh, you, you are salt. But if you don't taste like salt, how can you start? How can you taste like salt again? Salt that doesn't taste like salt is useless. So don't lose your flavor. This is an issue of anointing again. Salt has an anointing of tasting like salt. <laughs> it's truthful when it tastes like salt. When salt doesn't taste like salt, it's untruthful. It's not living into its anointing. When we don't live like Jesus, we don't taste like salt. But we're supposed to taste like salt. So how do you restore salt to taste like salt? Does anyone know how to make salt taste like salt again? It's really easy actually. Just get more salt, put it in the rest. Just add salt. <laughs> the point is, you're, you're supposed to be who God wants you to be. Salty. You know why? You know why? You know why it's salty? What? Why? So in Thai, to be salty, in Thai means like you are... Well, that's really awesome. You know what? You know what? Yeah. You know what? In, in this con, this cultural context, you know what salt, what salty means? It means it tastes good. If you don't put salt on your steak, it doesn't taste very good. Same thing with the tomato sandwich. <laughs> if you don't put any salt on it, it's pretty average. You put a little salt on it, it'll make you want to smack your mama. 
มันแปลตรงตัวไม่ได้มันทำให้เรารู้สึกอยากจะวิ่งไปกอดแม่แปลตรงไม่ได้มันเป็นสมวนเลยต้องมองหน้า Smack your mom. That'll make you smack your mama. Yeah. That that is. She said that that'll make you hide your mom. No. You translate what I say. That's it. I'm explaining it. See ya. Okay. Ha. If you say that, it's going to make us want to run away from mom. That's a southern saying. It means it's, it's so good you, you lost your mind. It made you so crazy you don't even know what's going on. That's how good it is. Salt also helps preserve things from decaying. Yeah. We're supposed to make the world taste good. And stop it from decaying. That's what salty means in the kingdom. Do you make the world around you better? Do you add to the life or add to the decay? Rotting and sweeping. You need to understand your purpose. It, look, the next verse is the same thing. It's saying the same thing. You're a light on a hill. Don't hide your light. Uh, lights on hills help people see. Yeah? Do you have lighthouses in Thailand? Yeah. 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 Exactly. If you're if you're a ship and it's nighttime and you're coming towards the shore. And you and you see a lighthouse. You put the brakes on. It helps you know how to navigate. If you keep going, you'll run your boat into the ground. And it'll put a hole in it. And it'll sink. It'll sink. So don't hide the light in the lighthouse. Someone may wreck their ship. The same thing with the light on a hill for in a city. It helps people find their way. And the people of the kingdom of God are supposed to help people find their way. That's your anointing. That's being salty. That's what tastes nice. That's a kingdom principle. What are your thoughts and questions right now? มีนักความคิดอะไรบ้างไหมมีคำถามอะไรบ้างไหมคะหมอประภาคานเป็นยังไง
Okay, let's take a break. Okay. Okay. The the next no. the next section of, of the of text that's one uh, literary unit that should all be put together is from verse uh, 17 all the way through the end of the chapter. I think verses 17 through 20 are something that people really struggle with. After when 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 Gentiles started to become Christians, everyone said, "What about the law?" And the church had to decide, "What? Well, well, yeah, what about the law?" What about all the details of the law? What about circumcision? What about not eating bacon? What, what about all these specific things? What about tattoos? I would like to get Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28 tattooed on me somewhere. Everybody, everyone know? Does everyone know what that says? Look it up real quick. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. <coughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah. I stuck with it. He stuck with it. We have a part that is in some shirt telling me about my music. She got to the shirt call. I have to clean uh. or something. I don't know. I did it before I know pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> this was the question. What about the law? Here Jesus says that not one letter of the law will ever pass away. He said, I didn't come to, to abolish the law, I came to fulfill the law. I think when people want to keep obeying these specific laws, like not eating bacon and not getting tattoos, they miss the point. They, they think the law is just the rules. The law is the whole system. He said, I, I didn't come to get rid of the system. I came to fulfill it. It's like he's saying this. The law or the whole system is a sign that's pointing somewhere else. It's like, it's like this. I'm the thing the sign was pointing at, says Jesus. This is the purpose of the law. To point to Jesus. When Jesus wasn't here yet, the sign was pointing, to, it wasn't doing its job. When Jesus says, I didn't come to get rid of the sign, he said, I came to make sure the sign could fulfill its purpose. Because, because its purpose was to point to me. The law still has that purpose. It's still pointing to Jesus. The law is still in effect. If you would like to be righteous, according to the law, go for it. I mean, good luck. The, the, the way you'll know if you are righteous according to the law is if you get resurrected from the dead when you die. Now remember, you, you have to obey every single rule in the law your whole life, always. To avoid confusion, I'm going to tell you the, the secret to this. Before I move on, uh, you can also try to be righteous by just putting your faith in God. You don't have to try to be righteous according to the law. You can believe that Jesus' resurrection from the dead was evidence that he was righteous. And, and just put your faith in him. 
Or you can try to put your faith in being righteous according to the law. But you need to understand what the law is actually about. He says it's more than, than just obeying the words of the law. The next section of phrases is Jesus helping people understand what the law was supposed to, to be about. It has, you see this same phrase repeated several times. You have, you have heard that it was said. He's talking about what's written in the, the law. They didn't have book, uh, chapters and verses back then. So they didn't, they couldn't reference the specific points as easily as we can. So, but he's pointing to the law. Huh? He's pointing to the law. He says, you shall not commit murder. That's what the law says. And anyone who commits murder is liable to judgment. I say, well, anybody who is angry with his brother is liable to judgment. Or insults his brother. Or calls his brother a fool. Uh, they're liable to hell. So if you're you're trying to go and bring your gifts to the to the temple and worship. And you remember that your brother has something against you? Stop what you're doing, leave your gift where it is, and go reconcile with your brother. It says, come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going to court with him. Otherwise, you're, you're going to go to the judge. You might get put in prison. Then you're legally obligated to, to pay for what you've done wrong. See, see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they look back at the law which said don't commit murder. And they were like, yes! I haven't killed anyone. Not guilty. But they were uh, having a lot of bad relationships with their brothers and sisters. With other people in their nation. They would look down on them and say, you know, we're better than you. Jesus is saying, look, you guys don't understand the law at all. The law that says don't commit murder is so much more than not actually killing someone. 
It says don't even think death over people. If you've ever thought something bad about a person, you're guilty of this same law of murder. This is about the value of humanity. And the value of death. Death is really bad. We don't want to think death. Even just a little bit of death. That's, that's what the kingdom is. It, it's, it's people who realize the value of other humans. This is why it's so important to understand the gospel. That's why it's so important to understand Genesis chapter 1. You're supposed to look at everyone around you. And see the most valuable thing in the world. Even when they're in sin. Even when they don't treat you good. Even when you're ugly. And I mean ugly like me. And he, he, he goes on and he's like, you guys are going to, to go to worship. You're bringing your extravagant gifts to the temple so that everyone can see how holy and awesome and godly you are. But you have broken relationships with your family. You're angry with your roommate because they keep hitting the snooze button on their alarm and it makes you mad. You have secret thoughts about them in your heart. You think, why can't they just get up when their alarm goes off? They're so lazy. Or you think, why can't they take less food when they go through the line? They're selfish. Or why didn't they why didn't they bring me a piece of cake? I, I wanted a piece of cake. Why, why am I always cleaning the bathroom and they're sitting there watching their television? It's called judgment. Because we don't see each other through the lens of the gospel. And what's even worse is we, we have all these secret thoughts about each other. And when it's time to go to worship, we're right up the front. Dancing and jumping and screaming and hollering. If we want to display how amazing we are and how much we love God. God says, stop it. Stop pretending like you're awesome when you're a crap you're a craphead. Just admit how crappy you are. And go apologize for being a craphead. The most valuable thing in the kingdom, is, what's more valuable in the kingdom is healthy relationships. 
The more you love other people, the more you have good relationships. The more you see people's value, the more you can forgive their sin, their laziness, their ugliness, how inconsiderate they are. Because really you're just selfish. And you expect people to do everything for you and to behave the way that makes you feel the most comfortable. You're selfish. The more you see other people sin, the more God's trying to show you that you're sinful. Stop it. Just stop it. Don't do that. It's the same as killing someone. You may not have ever murdered someone. Have you ever thought a bad thought about someone? I have. <laughs> you, yeah. So you've thought death about someone. Oh, if you're not as righteous as Jesus. You're not as righteous as Jesus. You're, not, you're, you're condemned <laughs> under the law. You deserve death. You still want to try to prove to God how righteous you are? You want to keep pointing to the law and say, I did all that? Good luck. He goes on in verse 27. Uh, he says, uh, you've heard it said don't commit adultery. I have never I don't know if I've ever committed adultery or not. I can't, I, 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 I don't know, actually, never mind. I could be guilty of this, this law. I'm not sure. Actually, I think I am. <laughs> I've never been married, so I was going to say I've never committed this. But I, uh, I think I, never mind. I'm not going to bring up the details. It's easy to think that you haven't broken the law about adultery if you haven't been with someone's wife or husband. It's easy to judge people who commit adultery. Jesus says if you've ever looked at someone with lust, you've committed adultery. If you've ever looked at someone with lust, you've committed adultery. Verse 28. You didn't value her? Or him? 
You didn't value the person they were married to. You didn't value the covenant that they made. And you didn't value uh, the sacrament. I know, I tried to use the word, but there's no other word. Marriage? Marriage? Sacrament. I want to say sacrament. But, so communion is a sacrament. It's, it's a special place that God has said he will be at. So is marriage. It's a sacrament. Jesus, Jesus was talking about marriage and he said, let no man separate what God himself has joined.
And Jesus goes on to say some really harsh things. He says, if you're looking at people and you lust after them, take your eye out. And if, you, if your hand makes you steal, cut your hand off. What's more valuable? Your body part? Or not sinning? Whoa! That's hard. You need to understand something. If you were to mutilate yourself or harm yourself by cutting off a body part in the Old Testament, it would make you unclean or less valuable, both. Jesus is saying if, if, the, if, 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 if you're less valuable because you sin, or less clean because you sin, you should cut off something that makes you sin. But cutting off your body parts makes you unclean. He doesn't mean literally cut your hand off. This is called hyperbole. We planned this. Yeah. I told her I was going to okay. use the word hyperbole. Hyperbole is when you exaggerate something to make a point. Stop sinning. Do what it takes to stop sinning. If you can't go to the grocery store without stealing candy, don't go to the grocery store. It's not that difficult. Stop sinning. He says uh, about divorce. In the law, it says if someone gets a divorce, you have to give a certificate to them. This was about making sure that the, the, the person was cared for. The point was don't get a divorce. The people looked at the law and they tried to use the law to find a way so that they were allowed to get divorces. Jesus said, stop quitting on your relationships. If you make a commitment, stay committed. Love each other. You're not loving people when you quit on them. He 
He keeps going over and over. He's saying the same thing. He, he is expanding the words of the law. To show you the heart of the law. The law was never just about the rules of what not to do. It was to show you God's heart for humans. The law wasn't just a list of regulations that showed you how that you could prove to everyone else that you were righteous. It was there to show you that it's not possible for you to be righteous. To show you that you needed someone to make you righteous. To show you you needed a savior. You needed someone to come and to pay the consequence for your sin. The law doesn't go far enough, Jesus says. And he wraps it up in verses 43 through the end of the chapter. He says, the law says, love your enemies, hate, uh, love your neighbors. Jesus says, love your enemies. It is very easy to love people that love you back. It's very easy to treat people good that may be able to give you something in return. When you treat people good because they can give you something in return, that reveals the motive of your heart. That motivation is called greed. If you only treat people good because you expect them to be good to you in return, your value, your, your motivation is selfishness. You're only being good so that you can get good back. Your good behavior is actually about you getting blessed. Because you don't understand blessing. And you're selfish. This is about the motives of your heart. The kingdom of God wants to get your heart. It wants to show you your motives. This book that we're reading, this Bible, it's, it's like a mirror. It's not like a picture, it's like a mirror. We can take a picture and make it look really pretty. We can hide our imperfections. A mirror, a mirror shows us as we really are. 
แต่ว่าประจบเงามันแสดงให้เห็นที่เราเห็นคนที่เราเป็นจริง The Bible wants to show you who you really are. แล้วพระคัมภีร์ต้องการที่จะแสดงให้เราเห็นตัวตนของเราจริงๆว่าเราเป็นใคร Wants to give you an understanding of your sinfulness. It wants to give you an understanding of your sinfulness. มันอยากจะให้เรานั้นได้มีความเข้าใจว่าเราเป็นคนบาป Can't understand how sinful you are if you don't understand sin. เราจะไม่มีความเข้าใจเลยว่าเราเป็นคนบาปอย่างไรถ้าเราไม่มีความเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับความบาป This isn't trying to make you perfect and sinless. การที่จะมีความบาปน้อยไม่ได้แปลว่าเป็นสิ่งที่ทำให้เรานั้นเป็นคนเพอร์เฟกต์หรือสมบูรณ์แบบ It's trying to show you your need for a savior. แต่ว่ามันแสดงให้เราเห็นความว่าความต้องการของเราว่าเราต้องการพระผู้ช่วยให้รอด It's trying to show you your need for grace and forgiveness. นั่นมันแสดงถึงว่าเรานั้นให้เราเห็นว่าเราต้องการพระคุณแล้วก็การให้อภัย And it's trying to show you how much everyone around you is in the same boat. ก็มันจะแสดงให้เราเห็นว่ามันพยายามแสดงให้เราเห็นว่าทุกคนที่อยู่รอบรอบตัวเรานั้นเราลงเรือเราเดียวกัน If you think you're better than someone, ถ้าเราคิดว่าเราดีกว่าคนอื่นหรือใครสักคน That you sin less than them, หรือว่าเรามีความบาปน้อยไปกว่าเขา If you don't hate the sin, ถ้าเราไม่เกลียดความบาป Your own sin, หมายถึงความบาปของเราเอง You can never love someone. เราจะไม่สามารถรักใครสักคนได้ Not truly. ไม่ไม่ได้รักเขาอย่างจริง The kingdom of God is a kingdom of love. เราก็อาณาจักรของพระเจ้าคืออาณาจักรของความรัก It's a kingdom that loves humans as the most valuable beings on earth. เป็นอาณาจักรที่รักมนุษย์แล้วก็ให้คุณค่ามนุษย์มากกว่าสิ่งมีชีวิตอื่น Because of their humanity. เพราะว่าความเป็นมนุษยชาติของพวกเขา Period. It's a kingdom that values relationships with God and relationships with others more than anything else. เป็นอาณาจักรที่ให้คุณค่าต่อความสัมพันธ์กับพระเจ้าก่อนและลงมาก็เป็นผู้คนอื่นๆมากกว่าคุณค่าอย่างอื่นสิ่งสิ่งอื่นต่อไปหลังจากนั้น If you're not going in that direction, ถ้าเราไม่ได้ไปเส้นทางนั้น You're not. You're not. Going in the direction of the kingdom. That's what we're going to look at tomorrow as we continue on. I'm going to keep showing you the mirror. You need to keep uh, being reading this this text. Let the kingdom of God shake what what you think you, uh, the world is about. This, this is very real, challenging, personal stuff. Let, let the Holy Spirit speak. This is why I said at the beginning, don't try to make do everything at once. Let the Holy Spirit bring the conviction. Your identity is that you're righteous. So, so, so act like it. So act like it. That's the kingdom. Right. This is tough stuff, guys. This is. I never.